makers of Lux Toilet Soap, brings you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Jeff Chandler and Julie Adams in My Man Godfrey. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. In the early days of the Great Depression, there were still a few of the idle rich who were unaware of the plight of the forgotten man. They weren't callous, merely harebrained and giddy. And in tonight's play, we will tell you the story of a fabulously wealthy family of the 30s and their forgotten man, Godfrey. Starring in this zany universal international comedy, we will have two of their top stars, Jeff Chandler and Julie Adams will join me later for a preview. The year is 1933. The place, New York's waterfront. The moonlight softly tips the majestic spires of the Queensborough Bridge with a silvery glow and comes gently to rest on a pile of refuse known as the city dump. In the center of this wasteland, a small fire is burning, and our man Godfrey, as tattered in tattered clothes with a three-day growth of beard, sits on a packing case warming his hands. A luxurious limousine purrs softly into the scene and comes to a stop. Three people alight. One of them, a young lady in evening clothes, steps gingerly toward the fire. Good evening. Good evening. How'd you like to make five dollars? How would I? I... I didn't quite catch what you said. I said, how would you like to make five dollars? Well, I, I don't want to seem inquisitive, but what would I have to do for you? All you have to do is go to the Waldorf Ritz Hotel with me, and I'll show you to a few people, and then I'll send you right back. May I inquire just why you would want to show me to people at the Waldorf Ritz? Well, if you must know, it's a game, a scavenger hunt. If I find a forgotten man first, I win. Is that clear? Yes, quite clear. And shall I wear my tails or come just as I am? You needn't be fresh. Do you want the five dollars or don't you? Uh, madam, I can't tell you how flattered I am by your very generous offer. What are you doing? Get away from me. However, I'm afraid I'll have to take it up with my board of directors. Don't you touch me. And no matter what my board of directors advise, I think you should be spanked. Oh! oh. You knocked me down. You deliberately pushed me into that junk pile. I didn't, but it suited you nicely. George! I saw that. I saw what you did. Are you in the habit of hitting ladies? Uh, maybe, but I'm in the habit of hitting gentlemen. Also, if that is interesting. Uh, now, 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 don't you hit me. George, aren't you going to do anything? Well, I, I most certainly am. I'm going to get a policeman. Come on. George, come back here. George. Get in, dear. I'll show that bone. <laughs> That was my sister Cornelia you pushed in the ash pile. How would you like to have me push Cornelia's sister into an ash pile? Oh, I don't think I'd like it. No, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you uh, a member of this hunting party? Well, I was, but I'm not now. <laughs> oh, it's the funniest thing. I couldn't help but laugh. I've wanted to do that ever since I was six years old. You wanted to do what? Oh, push Cornelia in something, a pile of ashes or something. <laughs> Cornelia thought she was going to win, and you pushed her in a pile of ashes. <laughs> uh, look, look, do you think you could follow an intelligent conversation for just a moment? I'll try. Well, that's fine. Now, do you mind telling me just what a, a scavenger hunt is? Well, a scavenger hunt is exactly like a treasure hunt, except that in a treasure hunt, you find something you want. In a scavenger hunt, you try to find something that nobody wants. And the one that wins gets a prize. Only there really isn't a prize, because all the money goes to charity. That is, if there's any money left over, only there never is. Well, that clears the whole matter up beautifully. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I, I suppose I should be going, shouldn't I? It's a good idea. I want to see who won the game. I suppose it was Cornelia again. She's probably got another forgotten man by now. You mean if you took me along with you, you'd win the game? Is that the idea? Well, I might if I got there first. Let's beat Cornelia. It wouldn't be asking too much. Not at all. You see, I'm very curious. I'd really like to see just what a scavenger hunt looks like. But I told you. Yes, but I'm still curious. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please. Quiet. Quiet. Miss Bullock has the forgotten man. Would you mind stepping up on the platform, please? Yes, get right up on the platform, Godfrey. 
Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Oh, fire away. What is your address? City Dump 32, East River, Sutton Place. <laughs> is that your permanent address? Well, the permanency is rather questionable. You see, the place is being rapidly filled in. <laughs> Do you mind? May I ask you a personal question? Oh, if it isn't too personal. Uh, are those whiskers your own? Well, no one else has claimed them. <laughs> Thank you. One more question. Are you wanted by the police? Well, that's just the trouble. Nobody wants me. A very good answer. Splendid, Godfrey. Well, the committee is satisfied. Miss Irene Bullock wins the scavenger hunt for the forgotten man. <laughs> going to speak. My, uh, my purpose in coming here tonight was twofold. First, I wanted to aid this young lady. Second, I was curious to see how a bunch of empty-headed nitwits conducted themselves. And my curiosity is satisfied. I assure you it'll be a pleasure for me to go back to a society of really important people. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Godfrey. Godfrey, wait. Oh, oh Godfrey, I... I'm terribly sorry. Well, that's all right. Oh, I'd never have brought you in there if I thought they were going to humiliate you. I, I'm terribly grateful. It's the first time I've ever beaten Cornelia at anything, and you helped me do it. I wish I could do something for you. Why? Well, because you've done something for me, don't you see? Well, I, I could use a job if you've got one lying around loose. Can you bottle? Bottle? Yes, we're fresh out of butlers. The one we had left this morning. Oh, I... I'm afraid I wouldn't be much good at it. Oh, yes, you would. You're going to make the best butler we ever had. You really think so? Oh, I do. Well, all right. Thank you. Good night, Godfrey. Good night. Good night. Well? Oh, I, I beg your pardon. I'm the... Yes, you're the new butler. Well, I'm the old maid. <laughs> Come in. Oh, thank you. Uh, how did you know I was the new butler? No, well, there's one every morning at this hour. They're dropping in and out all the time. Oh, is the family that exacting? No, they're that nutty. I see. Uh, does the uh, does the butler have quarters here in the house, or, or isn't it necessary? You won't need any quarters. Just hang your hat near the door so you can get it quickly on your way out. What's that? That's the old battle axe. She usually rings about this time. The old battle axe? Mrs. Bullock. She's the mother type. If she has the jitters, and she usually has, she'll ring again in a minute in no uncertain terms. Then, brother, you better grab a tomato juice and get going. There she goes. Well, Cupid, this is your big opportunity. Uh, shall I uh, take it to her? You might as well know the worst. But I want to warn you. She sees pixies. Pixies? You know, the little men. Oh, those, yes. Where, where do I find her? Upstairs. She's in the first cage on the right. Uh, <laughs> wish me luck. Happy landing. I'm not jumping. Uh, that's better. What's your name? Godfrey. Are you someone I know? Well, we met last night at the Waldorf Ritz. I'm the, the forgotten man. Oh. So many people have such bad memories. Yes, that's the truth. Uh, will, you, will you drink this now? What's that? Pixie remover. Oh. oh then you see them, too. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, we're, we're old friends. Oh, yes. But you mustn't step on them. I don't like them, but I don't like to see them stepped on. Well, I, I'll, I'll be very careful. I wouldn't hurt them for the world. No, no, 
Now, you drink this, and they'll go away very quickly. Very, very quickly. Thank you. You're a great help. Go away. Go away, little man. <laughs> there they go. You're very comforting, Godfrey. Good night. Good night. Hello. I put your hat and valise at the foot of the stairs. Well, I, uh, I think I won the first round. You mean you're still working here? I haven't heard anything to the contrary. Well, you just got by the cub. Now I'll try the lioness. Uh, which is she? Her name's Cornelia. She's a sweet-tempered little number. Oh, yes, I, I met her last night. You've got a treat coming. You've never met her in the morning. Well, let me have her tray. Second door. Thank you. Who's that? What Good morning, Miss Hyde. Well, I only... Get out. I have your... Get out, you... Oh, wait, you don't understand. Get out, my... get out, I said. And don't come back. I lost the second round. Hey, Molly, cut out all that noise and, and bring me some breakfast. Opportunity never stops knocking in this house. That's Irene. Do you want to try again? Why not? Well, here goes. Lots of luck. Good morning. I brought you breakfast. Uh, are you the new butler? Well, don't you remember last night? Well, what happened to Godfrey? I'm Godfrey. Oh, you look so different. What happened to all those nice whiskers? Well, turn around and let me look at you. <laughs> oh, you're the cutest thing I've ever seen. Well, thank you. Will there be um, anything else? Yes, sit down and talk to me. I like to talk in the morning when your head is clear, especially if you've been somewhere the night before. Sit down. Oh, if you insist, but it doesn't seem very good form for a butler. Oh, you're more than a butler. You're the first protege I ever had. Protege? You know, like Carlo. Who is Carlo? He's mother's protege. Oh. You know, it's awfully nice, Carlo, having a sponsor, because then he doesn't have to work, and he gets more time for his practicing. Then he never does, and that makes a difference. I imagine it would. Oh, oh it makes me feel so mature and grown up. Uh, what does? Having a protege. You're the first one I ever had, and, and it's terribly thrilling. Well, tell me, just just what does a protege have to do? Oh, you just go on bottling, and, and I sponsor you, don't you see? It's getting clearer. It's really not much work, but, but it gives you something to think of. Oh, it's going to be such fun. I, I'm sure it's going to be heaps of fun, but, oh, you see, a, a protege has certain responsibilities also. For instance, if... Uh, if someone should ring for me now and I didn't answer, that would reflect upon you because you're my sponsor, don't you see? Well, yes, I suppose it would. I never thought of that. Well, you don't know how nice it is having some intelligent person to talk to. It's been very enlightening to me, too. <laughs> oh, oh, I just thought of something else. Do you know what you are? I'm not quite sure. You're my responsibility. Oh, that's very nice. See you in church. See you in church. Bye, Godfrey. Goodbye, miss. Oh, Godfrey? Yes, Miss Cornelia? I see you're still with us, Godfrey. Yes, miss. I didn't think you'd last a full day. Thank you, miss. You like your place here? I mean, so far as you've gone. I must admit it's more desirable than living in a packing case on a city dump. Oh. That's where I met you, isn't it? <laughs> yes, I remember now. You were very amusing. Well, I, I am very sorry, miss. I didn't mind at all. Well, your handkerchief, there's a spot on my shoe. Will you see what you can do about it? Of course, miss. I could have you fired, you know, but I like to see things wriggle. When I get through with you, you'll go back to your packing case on the city dump and relish it. I'll make your life so miserable. Hello, Godfrey. Oh, good evening, Miss Irene. Oh, I, I like your new monkey suit. 
thank you for picking it out. Uh, how do you like my new lounging pajamas? I, uh, I think they're very nice. Uh, thank you. I heard what you said to Godfrey. So what? So what? You leave him alone. So who's going to make me leave him alone? If you don't, you'll get a good sock from me. Oh, the physical type. What I say goes. May I come in? You're in, aren't you? Good evening, Irene. Oh, hello, Carlo. I've just been reading a very interesting book, The Greeks of the Middle Ages. Irene would like that. You love the Middle Ages, don't you, dear? Shut up. Well, here you are. Mrs. Bullock, Marta Gratia. Oh, oh. Carlo, you're so continental. <laughs> oh, it's so nice to see you two girls having a pleasant chat. Or is it a pleasant chat? Well, well, well. Imagine the Bullocks gathered together all in one room. Don't forget Carlo, Alexander. I'm not going to forget Carlo. Oh, don't bother about me, Mr. Bullock. I feel like one of the family. Then you don't mind if I discuss a few family matters, do you, Carlo, my boy? Oh, no, not at all. Oh, Alexander, you're not going to bring up those sordid business matters again, I hope. I have just been going over last month's bills, and I find that you people have confused me with the Treasury Department. No, don't start that again, Dad. I've got to start it. The way you people are throwing my money around... Money, 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 money. The Frankenstein monster that destroys souls. What? Now listen, you... Please, please, don't say anything more about it. You're upsetting Carlo. Carlo, Carlo. Who's the head of this house, Carlo or me? I've never... Shh, you're uh, uh, who? Cocktails, sir. Uh, oh, <clears throat> thank you, Godfrey. But not at all, sir, Miss Irene. Did you make them, Godfrey? I helped. Oh, they must be wonderful. I'd like to help sometime if you let me. I feel honored. While we're on the subject, how about this business of certain people picking up anybody they find on the city dump and dragging them into the house? For all we know, we might all be stabbed in the back some night and robbed. Who's going to rob and stab who, Cornelia? I don't know a thing about certain people. You shut up. I will not shut up. My life is precious to me. It won't be in a minute. I think we should get our help from employment agencies. Well, I don't know, but when I agree with Cornelia... You... You... <laughs> oh, Alexander. You've upset Carlo, and now you're upsetting Irene. Don't you remember her breakdown last summer? I do. That's why I'm not paying any attention to this. Well, if nothing can sponsor Carlo, why can't I sponsor Godfrey? Godfrey knows I'm not being sure. But after all, none of us would like to wake up some morning stabbed to death. Now, Cornelia, you mustn't come between Irene and Godfrey. He's the only thing she's shown any affection for since her Pomeranian died last summer. <laughs> A gorilla for oh. A gorilla. I'd rather see him imitate a man. <laughs> this is too much. Too much. It certainly is. I'm getting out of this madhouse. I'll be at the club if you want me, and I hope you don't. Well, I'm off for dinner. We must all get together again sometime. Bye, Irene. Irene. Are you feeling all right, Irene? Where's Godfrey? Oh, he's right here. Don't go away, Godfrey. Angelica, we'll be late for the concert. I've got my things. I'll be right with you. Godfrey's right here, darling. Where? Right here. Look. Godfrey, say hello to Irene so she'll know who you are. Hello. Oh, oh hello, Godfrey. And he's promised to stay on, haven't you, Godfrey? Well, if I'm wanted. Oh, of course you're wanted. Isn't he, Irene? Yes. Go away. Oh, yes, darling. I'm going. <laughs> Goodbye, darling. Hello, hello, hurry. Hurry, 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 hurry. Oh, it's on. <laughs> Hi, Godfrey. Uh, yes, miss. Sit down, Godfrey. No. No, over here. By me. Uh, thank you, miss. Godfrey, would you mind kissing me? 
<laughs> Miss Irene, I, I hardly think... Oh, God, Oh, here, now, wait, wait, please, Miss Irene, you... Miss Irene, you want me? Excuse me. Godfrey, come back here. Where are you going? I'm going to my room. Godfrey, wait for me. Godfrey. 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 Now, Godfrey, you open this door. Godfrey. Oh. Oh, there you are, Godfrey. Please, Miss Irene, you, you, you can't come in here. Well, why not? It's our home, isn't it? After all, one room's just like any other room. Besides, I want to talk. I'm terribly sorry, but we, we, we can't talk here. Do you think it's rather indecent of you to order me out after you kissed me? After I kissed you? Well, of course, Godfrey. Don't you remember? Miss Irene, hasn't anyone ever told you about certain proprieties? Oh, you use such lovely big words. I like big words. What does it mean? You, you want me to remain on here as butler, don't you? Of course. And I want to justify your faith in me by being a very good butler. And in time... Perhaps filling the void created by the death of your late lamented Pomeranian. Oh, I've forgotten all about him. Yes, please, anyway. Besides, you're different. You use big words, and, and you're much cuter. Uh, may, may I tell you a story? I love it. Once there was a very sentimental little girl with a, a very kind heart, and she helped a man who was very grateful. Then she became a nuisance and undid all the fine work she had done. Which is someone you know? Her name is Irene Bullock. And if she were a smart little girl, she'd pick out some nice young chap in her own social set and marry him and live happily ever after and never, never enter the butler's room again. You mean I never, never, never can come in here again? Never. Now, now come on, out you go. And God, we stop. This way, please. No, no, I want to say, now let me go. Outside, please. You'll be sorry. And don't ever come in here again. during which Irene has shown an all-too-evident affection for her man, Godfrey. In the Bullock living room, a cocktail party is in progress. Irene, dressed in mourning, watches with tragic eyes as Godfrey moves among the guests. Now, let me see. What did I did? Spades? I never can tell the difference between spades and props. Uh, some order, Mrs. Bullock? What? Oh, yes. Thank you, Godfrey. Hello, everybody. Oh, look, it's Tommy Gray, the polo player. Tommy, come over here. Irene, Cornelia, look who's here. How are you, Angelica? Oh, I'm just fine. Godfrey, where are you going? Don't go away. Sorry. Give Mr. Gray some hors d'oeuvre, Godfrey. Very good, madam. Uh, Mr. Gray? Oh, thank you. I... Well, if it isn't Godfrey Park. Uh, uh, Smith, sir. Godfrey Smith. Smith? What do you mean, Smith? Oh, do you know Godfrey, Tommy? No, him. We went to Harvard together. Imagine a butler with a college education. <laughs> butler? Uh, is this a gag? Well, Mr. Gray neglected to tell you that when we were in Harvard together, I was his valet. Oh. Was he a good servant, Tommy? Oh, uh, excellent. Uh, what's the idea, Godfrey? I'll tell you later. Strange you never gave Mr. Gray as a reference, Godfrey. Well, you see, I, um, I left Mr. Gray under very unusual circumstances. What circumstances? I'd rather Mr. Gray told you about that. Oh, yes, go ahead, Tommy, tell us. <laughs> well, uh, uh, well, you, you, you see, uh, uh, Godfrey was working for us as a uh, butler and whatnot, and things were going along very well. But one day, he... he you sure you don't want to tell this, Godfrey? <laughs> I'd so much rather you would, Mr. Gray. Oh, well, uh, Godfrey was working for us quite some time, and one day he came to me and he said, uh, Mr. Gray, he said, I trust that my work has been satisfactory. And I said, well, of course, I said. Uh, I've never had more satisfactory work done in my life. And, and he said, uh, Thank you, sir. He, he was always very courteous, Godfrey was. <laughs> then he left? Yes. Uh, he, uh, he decided he had to leave. Why? Well, he decided in favor of his wife and five children. <laughs> Godfrey, why didn't you tell me you had five children? 
Uh, you never asked, Miss Irene. <laughs> well, all I've got to say is, is if other people can have five children, so can other people. Now, listen, everybody. I want to make an announcement about something. Uh, I want to announce my engagement. Oh, darling. Oh, congratulations. Who's the lucky man, Irene? Yeah. Not Johnny Van Rumpel. Yes. Yes, that's who it is. Johnny Van Rumpel. Oh, I think that's... Godfrey, what is all this? You meet me tomorrow, Waldorf Ritz Square, 3 o'clock. I'll explain everything. Isn't this engagement a little sudden, Irene? You shut up. Why don't you wish her luck, Godfrey? Yes, come and congratulate Irene, Godfrey. Why, uh, certainly. May I congratulate you, Miss Irene? I wish you all the happiness in the world. You wish... You wish... <laughs> oh, Irene! Well, isn't that funny? Crying at her own engagement party. Sometimes I don't think my daughters are all there. <laughs> Godfrey, over here. Oh, hello, Tommy. I thought you said you'd meet me here at three. Sorry, it took me a little longer than usual to make the beds. Well, what are you drinking? I think I'll have a, a rousing lemonade. Lemonade? Are you sure you can handle it? <laughs> uh, one lemonade, one martini, Joe. Yes, sir. Well, let's have it. Have what? The story. When I wander into that Fifth Avenue asylum and see one of the parks of Boston serving hors d'oeuvre, there must be a story. Oh, yes, there, there is, Tommy. You remember that little incident up in Boston? You still have that woman on your mind? Oh, not anymore. But well, I was pretty bitter at the time, so I gave her everything I had and just disappeared. And? Well, Tommy, it's surprising how fast you can go downhill when you begin to feel sorry for yourself. And boy, did I feel sorry for myself. I wandered down to the East River one night thinking I'd just slide in and get it over with. I met some fellows living there on the city dump. People who were fighting it out, not complaining. I never got as far as the river. Well, what happened? I stopped feeling sorry for myself. I built a shack of my own. I did all sorts of things just to live. And then, well, when well, something happened, I got a chance to take this job bottling, a chance to rehabilitate myself. I took it. And that's all? That's all. But someday... Someday, Tommy, I'm going to do a little rehabilitating around that dump, and that's, that's why I'm glad I met you. Me? You're going to help, too. Excuse me, Mr. Gray. Uh, oh, yes? You want it on the phone, sir? Oh, thanks. Uh, right back, Godfrey. Take your time. Good afternoon, Godfrey. Oh. oh, good afternoon, Miss Cornelia. May I sit down? Well, the mystery is solved, isn't it? The uh, mystery, Miss Cornelia? Yes. Now I know what a butler does on his day off. When you worked for Mr. Gray, were the two of you always this chummy? Well, you see, I am. Um, I worked for Mr. Gray a long time. Well, if you can be so chummy with the Grays, why can't you be chummy with the books? I try to keep my place. Why? You're very attractive, you know. As a butler? No. As Mr. Smith, you're a rotten butler. Sorry? We're going to be friends? And I, I feel that on my day off, I should have the privilege of choosing my friends. You can't go on like this forever. You really like me and you're afraid to admit it, aren't you? Do you, uh, do you want me to tell you what I really think of you? Please do. You won't hold it against me. It's your day off. Very well. Miss Cornelia, you belong to that unfortunate category I would call the Park Avenue brat. A spoiled child who has grown up in ease and luxury, who always had her own way, and whose misdirected energies are so childish they hardly deserve the comment even of a butler on his off Thursday. Thank you for a very lovely portrait. Goodbye for now. I'll see you down by the ash pile. Waiter. Yes, sir? Change that order. Make it two martinis, double. Molly. Yes, Miss Irene? What are you doing? Sewing some buttons on a coat. Oh. Oh, it's his coat. Yes. The coat is his. I'd like to sew his buttons on sometime when they come off. I wouldn't mind at all. I, I could do it down here in the kitchen. He doesn't lose very many. 
very tidy, isn't he? Yes, he's very tidy. What does he do on his day off? He never tells me. Oh, he's probably sitting somewhere with some woman on his lap. <laughs> he's the meanest man I know. I think he's very mean. <laughs> Well, there's nobody in his lap to discover them all. And, oh, as far as I know, there's children there, too. Calling him. Oh, I can't bear it. Please don't. You, too? Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly how you feel. Good evening. Well, well, let's... How, how, how about the quartet? For tomorrow may bring sorrow, so tonight let us be gay. Hi, Toots. Alfred, look at you. Where have you been? Friend of mine drinking rousing lemonade. Oh. Miss Cornelius. Father! Father! What's the matter? What's going on around here now? Father, my purse! What about your purse? They've been stolen! Stolen? Stolen? That's terrible. Well, we do. We'll call the police. <laughs> we'll do? Call the police. Good idea. Call the police. The G-men. Give me that phone. You don't have to bother. I've already called them. And I think I know who did it. In fact, I'm almost sure. What do you say, Godfrey? Hi, Toots. <laughs> I came home. I had put them in my jewel case this morning after breakfast. She probably lost them last year. She left them in a taxi. Did anyone see you put the pearls in the case? No. Yes. Godfrey did. He was taking the tray out of my room. He saw me. Godfrey, huh? Well, who's Godfrey? Well, that's me. I. No, no, me. <laughs> butler? He's the best butler we ever had. Oh, I'm sure Godfrey didn't do it. Although we don't know very much about him, my sister picked him up on the city dump. Oh, I see. Are you accusing Godfrey? I'm not accusing anyone. I want my necklace. It's perfectly silly to think of Godfrey wearing a pearl necklace. <laughs> yeah? Would you mind if we search your quarters, Godfrey? Why, not at all. This way, everybody. <laughs> with everybody yelling at me. I can't find them anyhow. Where, oh, where has my little dog gone? Shut up, you. <laughs> Miss Bullock, are you sure you lost your pearls? Of course I'm sure. Well, they're not in this room. Look under the mattress. What? I said look under the mattress. Yes, that's a good place. Okay. <laughs> oh, they're not under here either. Oh, but they must be there. What? <laughs> Nothing. What made you so sure they'd be under the mattress, Cornelia? Yeah, what made you so sure? Yeah, what? Well, I just... Well, that's where people usually hide things, isn't it? What are you up to? There's something screwy around here. <laughs> yes, and I think I know who. Yes, and so do I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Officer, uh, this whole thing looks like a mistake. Now, if you'll just forget it, I'll be very much obliged. Uh, my daughter is, well, uh, she's a little, uh, you know. Yeah, I know. But it ain't such a little. <laughs> oh, thank you, Godfrey. Thank you. Say, listen to this. Mrs. Bullock and her two daughters sailed yesterday for a holiday cruise around the world. It is rumored that the younger daughter, Irene, is trying to forget a broken engagement plus another heartthrob, which is the real reason for the trip. What do you think of that? It is a little quiet, sir. 
The uh, socialite, Mrs. Bullock, and her two charming daughters relaxing on the beach at Dolby. <laughs> They don't know what relaxing is. This is the first good rest I've had in 20 years. <laughs> Expected home next week. Godfrey, they're coming home. Yes, sir, your breakfast, sir. Never mind the breakfast. Just bring me a cup of coffee and four aspirins. <laughs> Good evening, miss. Doing the dishes? It's the usual procedure after dinner. Oh, it's nice to be home again, Godfrey. It's nice to have you. Did you mean it this afternoon when you said you missed me? Oh, yes, of course I did. I mean, did you miss Cornelia and me, or, or just me? Oh, I may have missed you a little more than I did Cornelia. Why? Oh, I'm glad. Because if you missed Cornelia more, you'd probably miss me less. Well, that sounds very logical. Oh, you look so cute in your apron. I, I'm not trying to look cute. Molly has a cold. I'm doubling for her. Will you let me do something if I ask you? Oh, what do you want to do? Why? <laughs> all right. You can tell me all about your trip. Well, you, you won't get mad. Why should I? Because every place I went, everybody was Godfrey. Every... I... I don't want to seem dull, but I do seem to have a little trouble following you at times. Well, for instance, whenever I go in a restaurant in Paris or any place, I close my eyes and say, the waiter was Godfrey. And I say, I'm home, and he's serving me dinner. It made everything taste better. And when I get in the cab, I think, the driver's Godfrey. Oh, and then we went to Venice, and, and one night I went for a ride in one of those rowboats that the man pushed with a stick. Not a matador. That was in Spain, but something like a matador. Uh, do you by any chance mean a gondola? Yes, that was the name of the boat. And the man that pushed it sang. He looked just like you. Oh, it was wonderful. Uh, look, do you mind if, if, if I talk for a little bit while you catch your breath? I'd love it. Well, while you've been away, I've been doing some things also. I've been trying to do things that I thought would make you proud of me. Oh, I was proud of you before I went away. Uh, yes, but I, I mean prouder still. You see... Well, you helped me to find myself. I'm very grateful. You'd make a wonderful husband. No, I, I'm afraid not. But I'd make a wonderful wife. And not for me, I'm afraid. But we, we are friends, and I feel a certain responsibility to you. That's why I wanted to tell you first. Tell me what? Well, I... Uh, I thought it was about time I was moving on. Godfrey! No, 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 please. Please don't... I, I won't cry, I promise. <laughs> That's fine. After all, I'm your protege, and you want me to improve myself, don't you? I want you to be anything you want to be. Oh, that's very sweet. When are you leaving? Pretty soon. But, well, I'll call you up every now and then. We'll have long chats, and I'll tell you how I'm getting along. We'll have lots of fun. Are you going back to her? To whom? Your wife. Why? Boy, well, she was just a fabrication. Oh, then you aren't married? Of course not. And, and, and there are any five children? Well, they couldn't be very well. <laughs> oh, Godfrey. Oh, Godfrey. Oh, did you ring, Miss Cornelia? Come in, Godfrey. You needn't be so formal when we're alone. Yes, Miss. There's a little matter I'd like to talk over with you. I met some people on the boat coming over, a Boston family. They know a great deal about a family called the Park. Are you interested, Godfrey? Uh, slightly, yes. Well, we can't talk here very well. Unless you and I take a long taxi ride out then Cortland Way. I heard what you said. Did you? He's not going out with you. Oh, yes, he is. If he knows what's good for him. I'll be waiting, Godfrey. He's not going. He's not. He's not. Oh, Godfrey, you can't go out with Cornelia. But I didn't say I was going any place with Miss Cornelia. Oh, I know, but you will. She always gets her own way. She makes everybody do just as she likes. Well, why should you care whether or not I meet her? Well, I do care. That's why. Cornelia's the one who doesn't care. I think I should decide those things for myself. Oh, Godfrey, I, I don't want to be annoying, but I... Oh. Here, Miss Irene, you... Come on, come on, get up. Open your eyes, you hear me? 
Open your eyes. If you're faking another spell, you're on the wrong track. Are you faking? Oh, you, you, you're not, eh? All right, we'll, we'll soon find out. Here now. Up she goes. That's the girl. Now I'll just carry her inside. Godfrey knows how to take care of little Irene when she faints. Godfrey will take care of everything. Right in here we go. Now, oh, does Irene know where she is now? No, no. Irene has her eyes closed. She's fainted. But Godfrey will soon fix Irene. Just sit here. That's a girl. Everything will be fine in just a minute. The best thing for the faints is a nice cold shower bath. on the piano, while Mrs. Bullock and Cornelia listen inattentively. Mr. Bullock, entering from the hall, surveys the scene gloomily. Oh, Solomio, oh, Solomio. Shut up. <laughs> what? What did you say? I told him to shut up. Well, I never... And you can shut up with him. You too, Cornelia. I didn't open my mouth. Well, don't. I've got some news for you that'll open it fast enough. Now listen and listen carefully because it hurts me to repeat it. The Bullocks are broke. What? I am broke. You are broke. She is broke. We are all broke. <laughs> Not only that, but I've been using the company's money for the last month to speculate with, and I've lost. You hear that? I've lost. That means I've an embezzler. Unless I get hold of a wad of money by the first of the month, I'm going to jail. <laughs> now, isn't that an interesting story? Well, I certainly think it was very foolish of you. You have no right to do it. An embezzler to think that I have been a guest in your house. Is there nothing left? Not a cent. Ah! Your food and drink have turned to dirt in my mouth. That settles it. Carlo, will you step into the hall for a moment? What for? I want to speak to you as man to man. You have found a way out? Yes. For one of us, anyhow. <laughs> this way, Carlo. Excuse me, please. Well? did you say to Carlo? I said goodbye. <laughs> did he go? Yes, he left very hurriedly by the side window. Oh, Alexander, you're cruel. Uh, did I hear something fall, sir? Yes, you did. Godfrey, come here. Carlo is gone. Is he? <laughs> well, you don't even seem surprised. Oh, I think I've been expecting it. We all have to go sooner or later. <laughs> Oh, you're so smart, Godfrey. Maybe you can tell me why Mr. Bullock has to go to jail. Mother! No, I'm sure Mr. Bullock doesn't have to go to jail. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, no, sir. You see, I've known for some time, sir, that the Bullock interests are in rather a bad way. Why, how did you know that? Oh, I follow the market a bit, so I took the liberty of dabbling in some stock on my own account. Here, sir. What's this? That's most of your stock. I, I knew it was being dumped on the market. I also knew somebody was going to be caught short. Short? You mean gentlemen short? No, no, just a minute. Just a minute, please. <laughs> gentlemen. 
Do you mean to Godfrey that you've been making money while I was losing it? Well, I, I did it in your interest, sir. I felt I owed your family a debt. I, I hope I've repaid it. I may add, some of the money went into a project of my own. I hope you won't mind, sir. You mean you did all that on $150 a month? Well, hardly. You see, with the aid of Tommy Gray, I was able to transmute a certain trinket into gold, and then into stock, and then back into pearls again. Thank you, Miss Cornelia, for the use of this trinket. Your pearls, Miss Cornelia. Oh, Godfrey. Then you did steal them after all. Well, I, uh... I put the pearls under Godfrey's mattress. Oh. Thank you, Miss Cornelia. I, I hoped you'd say that. Here, Godfrey. These pearls are rightfully yours. No, no, thank you. I've repaid my debt, and I'm... I'm grateful to all of you. If anyone's indebted, we are after the way some of us have treated you. Oh, no, I've been repaid in many ways. I learned patience from Mr. Bullock. I found Mrs. Bullock at all times, uh, shall we say, amusing. Oh, oh, that's very complimentary of you, Godfrey. <laughs> what good did you find in me, if any? A great deal, Miss Cornelia. You taught me the, the fallacy of false pride. You taught me humility. I don't understand you. Well, Miss Cornelia, there have been other spoiled children in the world. I happen to be one of them myself. You're a high-spirited girl. I can only hope that you'll use those high spirits in a more constructive way. So, goodbye. Oh, dear. There goes a great guy. Hello. Hello, Irene. Well, what's the matter? Nothing. What's the matter with her, Cornelia? I don't know. What's the matter with everybody? What's everyone crying about? Godfrey's gone. Gone? Gone where? He didn't say. <laughs> Why didn't you stop him? Why didn't you hold him here? We couldn't. Well, he's not going to get away from me. Where are you going? In a skinny jump. And this is it, Tommy. The Tramp Inn, we call it. A palace of pleasure built on a, a foundation of tin cans and ashes. How do you like it? Just a minute, Godfrey. Is this where my money went into a nightclub? Well, some of yours. All of mine. Come into my office. All right. Uh, by the way, what happens to the profits from this place? Well, so far, we're giving food and shelter to 50 people in the winter and giving them employment in the summer. But what do you want? Nothing, but you're the most arbitrary butler I've ever met. Oh, ex-butler. Oh, fired? No, no, I quit. I, uh, I felt that foolish feeling coming on again. You mean Irene? Well, why don't you marry her? No, thank you. Being her butler was tough enough. Well, uh, here I, uh... Oh, hello. Well, uh, Godfrey, you have company. Irene, what are you doing here? Yes, what are you doing here? Don't let him off the hook, Irene. I won't. Go on, Godfrey. Oh, my. How you fixed this place up, Godfrey. It's much nicer than when I was here before. Oh, you, uh, you noticed that. Are the forgotten men having a party? Oh, it's their annual reunion. I saw the mayor out there. Is he one of them, too? Oh, he's, he's the guest of honor. Oh, it's a, it's a lovely view, the, the bridge and everything. Is it always there? Most always. Oh, you have a kitchen. Oh, I'm going to like this place very much. Uh, what's over here? Well, uh... Is, is this where you sleep? If that's the general purpose of the room. Any observations? Oh, oh I think it's very cute, but uh, we'll have to change the wallpaper. What do you mean, we'll have to change the wallpaper? Oh, I don't like green wallpaper. It makes me bilious. Well, you won't have to look at it. You're going home right now. But I can't go home. I can't, Now, Godfrey. see here, you simply must... Oh, go on and lose your temper. I love it when you lose your temper. Why can't you leave me alone? Because you're my responsibility, and, and someone has to take care of you. I can take care of myself. You can't look me in the eye and say that. You love me, and you know it. You know, there's no sense in struggling with a thing when it's got you. It's got you, and that's all there is to it. It's got you. But you... May I come in? Oh, oh, Mayor Cortman. Mr. Gray said there were a couple of people in here who wanted to get married. <laughs> Are you it? Yes, we're it, Mayor Cortland. Irene! Can you marry us without a license? Without a license? 
Well, it may get me into a lot of trouble, but uh, <clears throat> I guess I've known your family long enough to take a chance. Does your father know about this? Oh, everybody knows about it except Godfrey. Now, come on, Godfrey. We're all set. Well, now, just join hands, please. No, no, wait. Listen, Irene, we, we can't do it. You can't. I, I... Now, just stand still, Godfrey. It'll all be over in a minute. <laughs> Relax. Enjoy it. Here they are, Julie Adams and her man, Jeff Chandler. Please, Mr. Cummings, you'll, you'll have us an item in a gossip column tomorrow morning. <laughs> Is that bad? When I was a young man, I didn't mind being mentioned with a beautiful young lady. Particularly when she was such a gorgeous luxe complexion. Well, now, I certainly don't mind. As a matter of fact... Julie is one of my favorite Lux girls. As tonight for Virginia Gregg as Cornelia, Eleanor Audley as Angelica, Alan Reed as Bullock, Carlton Young as Tommy, Yvonne Patey as Molly, Chef Mankin as Carlo, and Marty Phillips, Joe Forte, George Neese, Stanley Farrar, Barbara Ayler, and Eddie Marr. My Man Godfrey was based on the story by Eric Hatch, who also co-authored the screenplay. <laughs>